ketchup. Georgia. The ketchup, George. The ketchup. Oh. I know it's none of my business, but you are a very internal little creature. You always say something's none of your business, and then you act like it is. You are. That's why you spend so much time alone and why you don't have any friends. Now, Roxy here, she's as external as they get. You don't know me. I know your moods. Grumpy, mean and grumpy, sleepy and grumpy. Don't be stupid. They're cartoons. For one day. When there's a Broadway musical about your stylist but functional shoes, I will gladly walk a mile in them. It's over at the college. Parking's a nightmare. Parking's still a nightmare. I know what you're doing. You're trying to score some sweet young thing. Oh, Clemmy. Then you could steal a shitload of drugs. As you get older, the chance of making a really good new friend is probably about the same as being hit by a truck. And if you're hit by a truck, which is to say, dead, I felt lucky. Shakespeare sonnets. What an elegant, slender volume. Why, Mason, is your coffee table uneven? Wait. Is there a girl? Someone special you want to shag? I don't want to shag her, Daisy. <laughs> I, I do want to shag her, but not in the usual way. I, I like her. Oh, my. She's different. She's sweet. She's sophisticated. She's a college girl. A college girl? Hmm. Um, what is that supposed to mean? Nothing. How did you meet? Uh, I hit some bloke on the head who was trying to date rape her. Mm. A story to tell the grandkids. Yeah, yeah, but forget it. Mason, come on. It's a bit strange seeing you this way. She's different. I get that. But not too different. Oh, no, no. No, it'll be fine. You'll sweep her off for a feed show where there's more to life than book learning. She'll teach you about salad forks the romantic poets, and you'll teach her about car theft and amphetamines. I'm sorry. I hope it all works out, honey. What about me, Georgie? I'll ask her about you. Oh, what with that expression on your face? Well, fuck it! Oh, so you both will be like Romeo and Juliet, we will. Don't you? If Romeo had just masturbated a couple of times a week, he would have saved both those nice families a heap of trouble. Hey! We, you were supposed to meet me out front. I'm early, I know. Daisy Adair, I've heard so much about you, I feel I know you already. Oh. Hero. What? Uh, hi. Hello. This is my friend Charlotte. Charlotte, this is my stepdad and his wife. Uh nice to meet you, Charlotte. Honey. Huh? Can you run an errand for me, sweetheart? It's just a few blocks away. Do it for your stepdad. Sure, no problem. You might want to hurry. Someone's knocking at the door. I'm not going to let you break up with me. Okay, I'm here to apologize. This is for you. Uh, you didn't do anything wrong, Charlotte. I'm just screwed up. <laughs> Look, this is the part in our friendship where we start to admit that we're not perfect. What is that noise? <laughs> Cute talk. So, do something? Sure. <laughs> and I thought I'd, uh, I thought I'd stop by and see some old friends and... Mason, you look stunning. Wait, wait, I'm getting the image of a naked Jehovah's Witness bleeding by a dumpster somewhere. Oh, Charlotte, yeah, oh. <laughs> Mason, we're going out. It's girls' night out. We're going out to lesbian bars to drink Jack Daniels and make out with big women. <laughs> um. Uh, bye. Oh. I'll give it up. 
I like her. Sweetie, that young woman is gonna give her heart to a nice young man who has reading glasses and a tweed jacket and who has never done blow off the belly of a dead prostitute. <laughs> I like her. I know. She doesn't like you.